welcome to all of you there is Deepa Kumar from electrical engineering department NIT Hamirpur so how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I hope so so if I hope so then let's get started with a new lecture on control of electric drives we know that the control is a very essential part for any system for example if you don't control your appetite and you continue to eating chocolates and other stuff you may lose your body system so you get a health problem so just like to remain healthy you need a control electric system also like to have a better control to have a efficient system so the topic is control of electric drives play a vital role in for the electrical system so in this lecture we are going to cover some few essential topics such as control of electric drives modes of operation speed control open and closed loop drives current limit control tall limit control position limit control PLL which is phase locked loop and speed control so let's get started with the mode of operation we know that an electric drive can be operated in four quadrants where x axis is torque and the y axis is speed now your electric system can be operated in such a way that it can operate in one or more than one quadrant that is less than four and the power flow may be from motor to the load or from load to the motor so the conventions that covers the power flow analysis is that when the torque and the speed of motion speed of the machine are in the same direction that is your first quadrant or your third quadrant the machine is operating as a motor and the power flow is from motor to the load definitely it is acting as a motor and if the speed and torque are in opposite direction then the machine is acting as a generator and the power flow is from load to the motor where this power can get further converted into the electrical energy so in first quadrant which is your forward motoring torque and speed are in same direction and the load torque is opposite to the machine torque and the flow of power is from machine to the load in second quadrant speed direction is unchanged but the direction of torque is reverse and we know that the load torque is always opposite to the motor torque so the machine then receives mechanical energy then cut converted into the electrical energy and returning back to the source electrical source so machine is acting as a generator in second quadrant in third quadrant your both torque and speed get reverse since the torque and the speed are in the same direction the machine is acting as a motor
here the example is given of the bidirectional grinding machine which can operate in first and third quadrant here both the speed and the torque get reversed in case of a bidirectional grinding machine so this machine can be operated in first quadrant or third quadrant just like a horizontal conveyor belt it can be operated in the forward direction or in the reverse direction so both the torque and speed get changed while in case of a fourth quadrant your torque is same while the speed get reverse for example in case of a elevator here the machine is acting as a generator okay so from all this analysis we get that the any electric drive system operate in more than one quadrant and in fact more versatile system can operate in all the quadrants that is four so the converter of the system must be designed to elect to allow the electric power flow from source to load or load to source that is in both direction so now let's study about the modes of operation see we have seen that the motor can be operated or your motor or machine can be operated in all the quadrants and you know that that armature current can if you change the armature current you can change the torque direction so these will be used on the further analysis and if you see the basic principle of operation speed control here is a curve that is torque and omega with the more motor torque and the load torque the intersection of the motor load torque and the motor torque and the load torque gives you the operating point that is the speed control principle so if you change the motor torque parameter you can change the motor torque curve so if the motor torque curve is changed from the one curve to the second curve the operating point or your speed is changed from omega m1 to the omega 2 now what are the modes of operation just consider you are going on a bike now it is possible that you need to control the speed of the bike either you have to decrease the speed or you may have to increase the speed or you may like to remain at a steady state just like that there are three modes of operation of electric drive one is steady state second acceleration during starting and third one is deacceleration during stopping so the steady state operation is realized by adjusting the speed of characteristics such that the motor and load torque are equal at that speed that is given by the principle of speed control when the torque opposes motion the motor work as motor when the torque opposes the motion the motor work as motor in quadrant 1 and 3 the active load can reverse its sign and resist the mot motion in some cases like lowering of the loaded hoist for such a case the steady state can be obtained by adding mechanical brake which will produce a torque in direction opposite to the motion drive operating in quadrant second and fourth depend upon the direction of rotation of course the definitely two and fourth quadrant it is definitely depending upon the direction of rotation because the speed get reversed as compared to second and fourth respectively 
Acceleration and deacceleration mode are transient operations. Drives operates in acceleration whenever increase in speed is required. For this speed torque curve is changed so that the motor torque exceeds the load torque. Definitely when the torque motor torque is more than the load torque then the acceleration can happen. And the time taken for a change in speed, speed depend upon the inner shock motor and the load system and the amount by which motor torque exceed the load torque, the amount of difference. The same thing in deacceleration mode. Motor operation in deacceleration mode is required when a decrease in speed is required. Deacceleration occur when the load torque exceeds the motor torque. Whenever the re reducing the motor torque to zero does not provide enough deacceleration, mechanical brakes may also be provided. Alternatively, electric braking can also be used. Drives where the motor run at nearly fixed speed or coaster speed, single speed drives and multi speed which operate at discrete speed setting. So this is a classification of drives according to the speed control. We know that there is one coaster speed drive, one is multi speed drives another is variable speed drive fourth one is multi motor drives so drives needing stepless change in speed and multi speed drives are called variable speed drives when a number of motor are fed from a common converter or when a load is driven by more than one motor then it is multi motor drive Speed range of variable speed drive varies a lot. It can be from rated speed to the 10% of rated speed. In some applications, speed control above rated speed is also desired, so we can have um, we can have a ratio maximum to minimum as high as 200, or we can have a speed range as low from a rated speed to the 80% of the rated speed. So it can be anything within these ranges. A variable speed drive is called a constant torque drive if the drive maximum torque capability doesn't change with a change in speed setting. And that corresponding mode of operation is called constant torque mode. So what is the constant torque mode? That is basically referring to the variable speed drive. If your maximum torque capability doesn't change with the change in speed. It must be noted that the term constant torque refers to the maximum torque capability of the drive and not to the actual output torque which may vary from no load to full load torque. Constant power drive are defined in the same way that your maximum power capability will remain same it doesn't change but your power output can change in either case the motor speed should all should be remain constant as the load is torque is changed from no load to full load but in practical case the speed drops with the increase in load torque so quality of a speed control is measured in terms of speed regulation which is no load by full load by no load minus full load by full load speeds if the open loop control fails to provide the desired speed regulation open loop control fails to provide the desired speed regulation then it can be operated in a closed loop drive system closed loop control system so we have defined the mode of operation now how this method of speed setting is achieved electrically in these four quadrants of operation. So here the graph is shown. Here the curves are shown. For example, you want to reach the speed at A1 from the A2. So
so speed is to decreased in the same direction as omega is in the same direction so converter will transfer the operating point a2 to a2 dash that is in sec uh, second quadrant in an instantaneous moment so that no change of speed will occur this type of command is given to the drive system the operating point of the drive will follow a2 to dash to a2 double dash through the boundary condition at a2 double dash the converter will transfer again the operating point at the stable point that is your a1 similarly the method of change of change of speed from b1 to b2 so this is basically an example of speed reversal from b1 the operating point of the drive will be shifted to b1 dash by converter from b1 dash the speed will attain zero and the reverse rotation will be made by the converter at b1 double dash torque will be changed to the desired one and the driving point will come to the stable point b2 another example method of change of speed from c2 to c1 c2 is in first quadrant c1 is also in first quadrant so we are basically we are in intending to increase the speed of the drive now since the speed is to be increased command will transfer the operating point c2 to c2 dash which is again in the first quadrant from c2 dash the operating point will reach to the c2 double dash through the boundary condition after that motor will be allowed to change the power to the stable point that is c1 if all the power operation for the three cases are to be made more fast it is also possible but at time transient limiting condition of the multi quadrant are to be followed see this above method of change of speed setting is no doubt an ideal one but it obviously increases the cost that is why it is also worthwhile to use the above method so it is not worthwhile to use this method suppose the speed is to decrease from one operating to another instead of using two quadrants one and two the acceleration can be made in the first quadrant also by providing sufficient large load torque so basically we are not changing here the motor torque we can also change the load torque curve there may not be any need of negative braking torque of the second quadrant of course the response will be much slower compared to the earlier idle one so this is for today hope you have gained a uh, good hope you have enjoyed this lecture and we will soon continue this lecture that is on a part 2 so have a nice smile and say bye bye